Well, my name is Eric Lantris, and today we're going to be talking about staying safe and avoiding penalties. So this is a preventative guide, and of course we do not control Google, but you know what? Let's put all the odds in our favor. Let's remain as safe as possible, and this guide is all about the things that Google checks, all our experience of what we've seen happen on the web, and how to stay safe. This is stuff that they've talked about in their patents. Um, you know, it, we've gotten feedbacks on oh, when someone ever, when people push the limit and they run into a penalty. We, we have a lot of feedback, a lot of information, and I'm gonna bring all of that to you so that we can be as safe as possible while still link building, while still having, you know, while still ranking quite well. So this is to help you rank um, and without, you know, triggering any penalties. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna be talking about the seven elements that Google monitors. I'm gonna tell you how, I'm gonna show you how uh, best to avoid triggering one of these elements that might trigger a penalty and my personal methodology for um, you know how I build links. Because let's face it, you need links. So if you wanna rank, and this whole thing is not about scaring anyone off, this is all about uh, ranking, but ranking smart. Uh, ranking without penalties. So let's jump right into it. Um, how Google works uh, for real. <laughs> so the uh, Google has algorithms and they've coded a lot of things to detect abnormal web activity. So most of the elements inside the algorithm, they are there and whenever something seems off, some of the things seems more than normal, it triggers an algorithmic or manual review. So basically it's, it's like a radar. So if there's an abnormal activity that happens, something weird happens, like you get a, t a ton of links in a very short period of time. What happens, it triggers either a algorithmic a review, like an algorithmic penalty or a manual review. If it triggers a manual review, the review goes in and if he sees that, okay, no, this actually isn't legitimate, then he signs a penalty. Um, if your abnormal activity is so obvious, for instance, you build like, uh, you know, 10,000 links with the word Viagra in it, then Google won't even send a manual reviewer and you're likely just to get an algorithmic penalty right away. So uh, there are different levels, there's algorithmic and manual, but we wanna avoid both. And Google works with um, triggers to probably send people in. So this is what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about avoiding the triggers. So the methodology, the best way is basically to take a look at all the elements that Google looks at. I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna cover seven, the seven major ones that I know of and the ones that I pay attention to. Um, and we're gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I um, best avoid them. So Google's always adding new things and you know, I can't, I can't see the future, but this is so far the safest that I could, that I could put together. So whenever you're working with Google, don't think about the exceptions. So don't think, well, this could happen. Instead, you wanna focus on this normally happens. So what I mean by that, this is actually the golden rule that I use all the time is, you know, what could happen? Well, it's in theory possible that, you know, you could put up a web page, it goes viral, and then you get 500 links in a day. Like that could happen. That's the exception. However, what normally happens is not that. So uh, normally you might get one link every week, you might get one, day, one link every few days or so. That's more normal. And whenever we're talking about avoiding triggers and penalties and all that, we always wanna stick on the side of normal. So we don't wanna stick on the side of what if, the exception, one in a hundred, this could potentially happen. No, no, no. We wanna avoid all the like exceptional cases and we wanna fly below the radar, as they say, and I'll go with kind of like the average. So the elements that Google monitors for abuse. First one, obviously, is the one I talked about the most, and this is the one that I'm the most concerned with because most people go over this all the time uh, when they're just very ambitious and overzealous, is link velocity. Google, and this has been known, Google measures link velocity, which basically means how fast you are you building links to your website or page. And if you go over a, a normal industry rate, you risk being penalized. So for instance, on the right hand side, you can see a graph and you can see the graph where there are no links, no links, no links, no links. Oh my God, so many links. That um, tends to trigger a penalty. So what I consider bad is if you build 10 links a day for a brand new website, that is seemingly unnatural. If you, if you have more incoming links than visitors to your page, 
something's really weird because why Google's mentality is that people visit your page and because they really like it they would then give you a link but if no one's coming to your page in the first place then how could you get 10 links per day it just doesn't make sense right so that would be what I would consider bad it's too many um, another example of what would be bad would be five links per day to a single page so even if you're you know, in the first example, I'm scattering them out around the entire website, and I'm assuming you have a small, you know, smallish website because it's brand new. But what if you only have one single page and you're building five links per day to that page? Well, that starts to be quite steep. That's five links per day is actually a lot of links. If they're all legitimate votes, they're all people finding your page and writing about it. You know, that is that is the extreme. I mean, think about it. Like, if you had five journalists writing, uh, you know links and articles about you per day every single day after a week you'd have 35 right that it's a lot of links and a lot of you know that's really really quick um, or even if you have a big site because bigger sites obviously they're gonna be getting more links because they're more popular they have more pages and so forth but if what if you got 300 to a thousand links within 24 hours I don't care which site it is even if it's YouTube and you get you shoot a thousand links to a YouTube video within 24 hours that is still quite a lot. Um, we, you know, that actually, you know, funny story, um, spamming links to YouTube videos used to work really well when a, 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 few, a few, and you could basically run uh, these programs and just spam like YouTube links and, you know, they would rank and you would be like, awesome. But now, even now, Google has toned down on that. And if you start spamming YouTube video with a bunch of links, it doesn't necessarily work as well. In fact, what I have found, and many people, many people have found, is that spamming is not, and like building links super quickly doesn't provide the best results. Instead, the best results are found by building um, slow yet very, very powerful links. So, for instance, what you know, what I consider good is one super powerful link every two, three days. If let's say on day one you you appear in the Guardian magazine uh, the newspaper. So that would be extremely good. Then the next day, um, like two or three days later, you're on Slate. And then two three day later, days later, you're on Huffington Post. That becomes very powerful. That's the type of rate that you would want to kind of achieve. And if you're going to be building links, one very powerful link every two three days is going to be probably among the strongest that you can. Now, I say one link every two, three days, and I know, I say that knowing very well that people are gonna build more. Because every time I say X, people are like, yeah, well, let me just do a bit more, it's gonna be better. So, you know, I'm saying one link per day, and then do with it what you want. But um, one link every two, three days seems to be like, if they're powerful, it seems really good. However, on the other side, if you're building one link and it's not a powerful link at all, then it's not gonna give you any results. You're not gonna see much from building one link every three days, you know, like one social bookmark every three days isn't going to exactly power up your site to the number one position. So you really need to build powerful links when you're building the links. But in terms of link velocity, you know, that's what you want to aim for. You want to aim for the lowest kind of link link velocity that's always increasing, but always with a lot of power. So I said way too much about that, uh, but I had to kind of, I just wanted to let it all out. Um, next, we're going to be talking about anchor text. So Google verifies the anchor text used in each link. So if a bunch of domains are linking to you with the exact same anchor text, then it looks unnatural. So um, what would be bad would be five links from different places with all the exact same anchor text. Now, when you know how Google is looking for original content and original data, well, that's that's awesome, right? That like Google is really severe about that, and everyone kind of knows, like, oh yeah, you need to have original content. So, isn't it weird that if we have a, all this original content, but then the anchor text is exactly the same thing? Because I mean, if you're getting original, natural links, and the anchor text should naturally vary over time. So, um, what would be very unnatural to, it would be to have best fishing poles, best fishing poles, best fishing poles, best fishing poles from from a bunch of different sites. That's really really odd and weird um, or if they're repeating with extreme um, similarity so if you have like best fishing poles best fishing poles um, the best fishing poles best fishing pole without an s as they're all very 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 similar then that also could be seen very suspicious so 
what I instead recommend is going to be to vary every single link with slightly different anchor text. So if you have best fishing pole or you have like, hey, I found the best fishing pole or um, I just reviewed this great fishing pole or this top, the top fishing pole or, or so. Having synonyms, having different variations, having, you know, you want to remain close, but not exactly close or not exactly over and over and over again. So a lot of people ask me like, how are you ranking these sites, you know, the number one position well i'll tell you most of the time these places in the one number one position will only have one or two exact match anchor text most of it is variant most of it is like it's, it's close but it's not exact so the other good thing that you could do is also build url anchor text links so that's when you use the, the url as the anchor text that works well as well and that seems to be kind of like the exception where you could have you can have a bunch of those and you'll be fine. However, for anchor text, watch out. That is another big trigger in the Google algorithm. Then we have spun content. Spun content, I, I, I get so many questions on spun content because a lot of people, I don't want to say, it's just it just seems like an efficient way of doing it, but Google has algorithms that detect spun content. They've designed algorithms that detect specific spun content from different subs spun content creators for instance like they know the best spinner they know content machine they they know that programs are out there and they test their algorithms to see if they catch that spun content so um, when google finds your links inside spun content then it's an obvious flag it's an obvious trigger that like hey this guy has 400 links and they all come from spun content content that seems a little odd so um, that you know that's an obvious trigger. So you want to obviously make sure that your link is not included in spun content. So if you're building a bunch of blogs or you're just distributing articles or doing whatever you want, I recommend don't use spun content because even if Google doesn't detect it today, they're always improving on their spun content detection algorithms, right? They're always making it better. So if you want to you know future proof yourself, then even if they don't detect your spun content today, they might detect it in a year or so. So you wanna make sure that you're using original, high quality material, and that just puts all the odds in your favor, right? It's put all the inside. So that's really gonna be the next big thing where sometimes, you know, many, 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 many penalties um, come because people are using spun content, it wasn't detected, and then Google comes out with a new algorithm that detects their spun content, and then they're like, oh, well, you have you know 400 links of spun content. So you wanna avoid that. The next thing is gonna be irrelevance. Now, irrelevance is basically, it's, it's very simple. It's just, does your, do your links come from relevant pages or not? So if you have a dentist site and you have a bunch of links from car, casino, supplement pages from all over the place, but you don't really have dentist links coming in, that seems quite suspicious and that could trigger um, penalties. That could trigger uh, red flags that your site's getting a lot of links from really random places. For instance, profile links. You know when they had the profile packets where people just built profile links all over the place? That's very suspicious when no, none of the links are coming from industry sites. Um, what is good is if you do actually get you know, links from industry sites, if you have a car site and you're getting uh, links from trucks, racing pages and like, you know, tools and all that, that, that just, that's just awesome. So um, watch out for relevance. The next thing is also going to be on content. It's going to be about low quality content and thin content. So Google actually even talks about this in their, their guidelines and all that. They talk about how the algorithms evaluate page quality. And if you have a lot of links coming from pages that have gibberish or just have like a bunch of like, or that really, really thin. So if you have a, your link in a bunch of profile links or if you have like, you're in a lot of thin uh, directories or like you have your link, like I said, in gibberish. So basically you know, weird sentences, just mashup of words basically. So it's original, but it doesn't make sense then that is an extremely bad sign that tells Google that you know, you're know you just trying to artificially create links. So instead, obviously, the completely obvious thing is just get links from high quality content. So I always try to get links that on pages that meet the minimum quality guidelines. So you, you know what we're talking about. Um, you know, enough text, original images, um, related content around, relevant, re relevant links. 
kind of want to have the whole package, you want to get yourself some links from high quality pages. Um, the next thing that Google looks at is going to be abnormal link maps. Now, what do I mean by a link map? Well, I'm basically, you know, if Google kind of has like an overview or a top down view of the entire web, and if your website um, has receives basically, you know, let's say 50 links from the same IP, but they're all different websites, but they're all hosted on the same IP, that looks weird. That looks odd. So even though it's completely normal to own hundreds of sites, you know, there are people, there are stock, bro there are, I mean, website brokers, uh, I own a ton myself. You know, a lot of people own a lot of websites. Websites are, are like real estate, so that's normal. Um, however, what isn't normal is to have all those same, same websites on the same IP. Um, even though it is sometimes normal to have a bunch of websites on an IP, it is not normal for you to own all your websites on the same IP and then take all those links and point them to one place. So basically what it comes down to is if you do own a lot of websites and put them on different IPs, um, vary them up, put them on different IPs, put them on different hosts. And you want to basically not take all your 50 or 100 or how many sites you have and point them all to the same place. It's all about diversity, it's about varying things. So even though you're you're perfectly fine, you're allowed to own as many websites as you want, just don't point them all at the same page or the same place because then that triggers a red flag in Google's eyes. And the best thing is as I was always saying, I was saying I was saying before, you really don't need that many powerful links to rank. So it's not about having a thousand links, it's about having maybe 10, 20 that are really strong. So if you have 10, 20 links and they're all coming from different places and they're on different hosts, maybe you use a different registrar and you register different um, different accounts and so forth, that ends up painting a very, very safe picture. Now, as a guaranteed, we, we have no guarantees in life, but that's you know the, really the safest and that produces the best ranking results right now. So in terms of link map, what I really urge you not to do is to you know, register 50 domains, put them all in the same IP and then point them all to one page. You, that's just asking for trouble. Instead, you wanna vary it up as much as possible. Um, I think that's pretty much, that's common sense, but I just wanna, you know, say it. Um, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna avoid being sneaky. Uh, you, do, you don't wanna use any weird scripts or cloaking or sneaky to redirects. Basically trying to trick Google usually ends up not working. Um, so if you have redirects or iframes or there, there's a lot of ways that people are um, like, oh, this might work, this might work, this might work. Uh, chances are I've tried a lot of them and it didn't work. Um, and instead it ends up usually triggering uh, penalties. So what is normal is to have a 30, 301 redirects. If you're doing actual normal things, like you have normal web pages, normal sites, you can have a WordPress site, you can have a Joomla site, you can have an HTML site, whatever you want. You can have a normal website that doesn't trade, that, that doesn't raise the flag. If you do a simple 301 move that happens all the time, it doesn't raise the flag. When you start trying to be tricky with, with redirects, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you, you're likely not, to, <laughs> don't worry about it. But if you do know what I'm talking about and you're trying to cloak or have you have iframes or you have like a redirect that jumps to another redirect that jumps to another redirect and then funnels things in that when you start getting into some crazy stuff like that that's when google you know when they catch you they catch you so um just keep it simple basically that ends up being the the idea is just keep it simple do what works and that ends up being the safest way so the best way really uh, to remain safe is to act normal, uh, act slow and natural and normal. See, I don't. I try to be. Uh, I try to do every. You know, replicate normal web environment, and I try to avoid the exceptions. So even though, yeah, it is possible that in a day you get 200 links if you go viral, I try to avoid that. I don't want to be the exception. Instead, I want to be the norm. I want to be the, the normal website that gets one or two. Uh, links every two three days that ends up being the best and the easiest and provides the best results anyways So at the end of this here's what I personally do whenever I build links I'm building only a few links per week, but they're really strong links I, I don't you know first of all it takes time to build many links. We don't have that much time, right? We're all we all have things to do so I only build a few um, 
But when I do build a few, they're super strong and I always vary my anchor text. As I mentioned before, every single link I build, the next link after is probably gonna have a different, a different anchor text. Um, as a general rule for myself, I never build two links that in a row that have the same anchor text, like ever, ever, ever. Um, they're always gonna be varied. So all my links are also surrounded by high quality content. I get, I put more emphasis on that than I think anyone else. And I really have a huge, you know, all the links that you, that I receive could be stand on their, on their own alone. So if I'm receiving a link from a site I put up, then that site could stand on its own and should be ranking on its own alone. And that really provides the quality that is required. And also I believe that that kind of future proofs it. Doesn't make it guaranteed, but it puts all the odds in my favor. Um, also, obviously they all come from various different places. I have a ton of servers, a ton of hosts, uh, they're registered all, like my sites are registered all over the place. And I, like I said, I, I own hundreds of sites, but that doesn't mean that they're all in the same, uh, same name, same IP, and they're all hosted in the same place. I, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of diversity. And some domains, you know, I just own them, but are, they're not even, I'm not using them right now. I'm just holding them because you know, domains, you know, good domains are like real estate. Um, so, like I said, we can't control Google, but you know, following this puts all the odds in your favor. It really allows you to do um, some good link building that will provide some excellent rankings. And you know, good link building with excellent rankings really is not complicated. Just do it slow, take your time, and then you will get some good results. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at sales at landpublications.com and happy safe link building.